not really a stick as you can see. It is a big old branch took down from a tree. There are signs and symbols that are painted all around and it has one hole from the top to the bottom and it does make a sound. Now the first Englishman that came to Australia by the sea. Why, he heard the sound of my e da -E. And when he reached the Australian shore, he said, man, would you redo that sound some more? And did you redo that tree from the ground? Now, would you redo your curious sound? <laughs> stories came through the open door. A vagabond crept slowly in and he posed upon the floor. Where did he come from? Someone cried. The wind must have blown him in. What does he want? Another said. Some whiskey rum or gin. My friend, you seek him if your stomach is equal to the word. I wouldn't touch that bum with a fork. He's as filthy as some pork. This bad bitch, that poor wretch, he took with social good grace. In fact, he smiled as though he thought he'd struck the proper place. Oh, come, boys, he said. I know there's kindly hearts among so good a crowd. Why, to be in such grand company would make a deacon proud. Give me a drink. That's what I want. For I'm out of funds, you know. And when I had cash to treat the gang, why my hand was never small. What? You laugh. As though you thought my pocket never held a sou. But I once was fixed as well, my friends, as any one of you. Ah, there, thank you. That braced me nicely. God bless you one and all. Next time I pass this good saloon, I shall make another. 
give you a song. No, I can't do that. For my singing days are past. My voice is worn out, and my throat is cracked, and my lungs are going fast. Say, give me a, another drink, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I shall tell you all a funny story, and in fact, I promise to. That I was once a decent man, well, I doubt if you would think, but I was some four, five years back. Say, could you give me another drink? Fill her up. I want to put some life into my friend. For such small drinks, for a man like me, are miserably tame. Five fingers, there, that's the scheme. And make it corking whiskey, too. Well, my friends, here's luck. And landlord, my best regards to you. <sighs> Folks, you've treated me very kindly. Now, I should like to tell you how. I've come to be this wretched bug that you see before you now. As I once told you, I was a man with muscle and fame and health. And if it wasn't for a blunder, I would have made considerable wealth. I was a painter, not one that dabbed upon the bricks and wood, but I was an artist, and for my age, I read it pretty good. I worked hard at my canvas, and I was bidding fair to rise, and I could see that star of fame growing before my eyes. And then, I met a woman. <laughs> Here comes the funny part. She had eyes that petrified my brain and sunk into my heart. Why don't you laugh? It's funny that you see. This vagabond before you could ever love a woman and expect her love for me. But it was so. And for a month or two, her smiles were freely given. Her loving lips touched mine, always sent me straight to heaven. Have you ever seen a woman for whom your soul you give? I mean, one with the form of a Marlowe de Venus and too beautiful to me. What a wealth of hair. If so, my friend, twas her. Cause there never was another woman half so fair. Well, I was working on a portrait. One afternoon in May, of a fair-haired boy. He was a friend of mine, who lived across the way. And Madeline, why, she admired him, and much to my surprise, she said, I'd like to know this man who has such dreamy eyes. Well, it didn't take long for her to know him, and before the month had flown, my best friend had stole my darling. I was left alone. And then, a year of misery passed above my head. And the Jew 
that I had treasured so, had tarnished Adam's day. That's why I took to drink, boys, why I never saw you smile, and I thought you'd be amused and laughing all the while. Why, what's the matter, friend? Is there a teardrop in your eye? Come, laugh like me. Huh? It's only the babies and the women that should cry. Say, give me another drink, and I'll be glad. And I'll draw right here a picture of the face that drove me mad. Give me that piece of chalk with which you tally up your score, and you will see the lovely Madeline upon this barroom floor. So, it was with another whiskey and chalk in hand that that vagabond began to sketch a face that well might buy the soul of any man. As he placed another loving lock upon that shapely head with a fearful shriek and an awful leap, he fell across the picture dead. <laughs>